Yes, you did indeed read that title correctly. Today we are looking at a 2001 model iBook G3 500MHz, with dual USB that I picked up for $30 recently, which originally sold for, no joke, 2,995 Australian dollars back in 2001. Let's round that up to $3,000 for simplicity. Adjusted for inflation, that's roughly $4,376. So I essentially paid 1% of its original cost. So, how good is a 16-year-old laptop? I think you might be surprised. Just to clarify, you can still find iBooks like this very cheap. In fact, I've gotten over 20 in the last few years for free, either being thrown out or given away. So, always keep your eyes peeled. The first thing that really stands out with this machine is the design, and just how small it is. Back then, this was one of the slimmest and lightest full-featured 12-inch notebooks around. By today's standards, it's a bit heavy and quite chunky, but it was definitely years ahead of the competition back in the day. Plus, you got features such as an optical drive, a full complement of I.O., and a headphone jack. Boy, have times changed. The outer shell is made from translucent polycarbonate plastic. Even the charger looked really cool with its round, translucent design, similar to that of a yo-yo. Upon powering up the machine, your ears are greeted with the all-too-nostalgic boot chime, followed by that little happy Mac character. This machine is currently running macOS 9.1, but it is capable of running up to macOS 10.4.11. Due to the moray effect, the screen does look kind of weird, but in person it looks great. It came with a stack of software and newer versions of macOS, but I'll be sticking with 9.1 so I can run a few legacy programs. When it comes to specs, this laptop is running a PowerPC G3 processor clocked at a blazing 500 megahertz. It's been upgraded to 128 megabytes of PC100 RAM, which is upgradable to 640 megabytes. Driving the 12.1 inch TFT XGA 1024x768 display is an ATI Rage Mobility 128 8MB graphics processor. This at the time was quite capable and had similar specs to the Titanium PowerBook G4 that started at $5,495 in Australia back in 2001. Adjusted for inflation, that would be around $8,029. Oh my god. Adding Wi-Fi was as simple as slotting in the optional Airport Extreme card under the keyboard. One of the best features of this machine is the absolutely lovely keyboard. Honestly, this has to be one of the best feeling keyboards I have ever typed on. Just the right amount of key travel and a great tactile feel. I really wish a lot of modern laptops could match this. So, what can you do on this laptop? Using Mac OS 9.1? Not a lot, really. You can sort of browse the internet, even using Wi-Fi if you're connecting to a compatible router. You can use old applications, listen to music, make movies. Don't worry, I'm going to make a video editing an entire video using this laptop in the near future. And you can even play a few games. The 8-Bit Guy on YouTube has made several useful videos showing just what these machines are capable of using more modern operating systems and upgraded RAM. Personally, if you're looking for a laptop to do day-to-day -day tasks, it is definitely possible on this machine, but there are far more newer Apple and even Windows laptops that are being given away or thrown out by people. See my video on the free Lenovo laptop I got, linked in the description. So, there it is, a relic from the past. A 16 year old laptop with a design way ahead of its time. If you want me to do more videos like this then let me know and feel free to subscribe to stay up to date with my latest uploads. I'll see you next time.